What's up, Reject Nation? I'm Greg. I'm John. Snow. Oh, she's our queen. I don't want it. Dude, you like did most of the script right Dude, there. I memorized his lines. I'm telling you, <laughs> when they remake the show, I'm going to play Jon Snow. Honest Trailers Game of Thrones Volume, Volume 3. three. Alright, well, I'm sure they'll be covering a lot of the last season here. This is exciting. Really excited. We have talked about so much Game of Thrones, covered all the episodes on YouTube, did a whole like hour long spoiler review. And yeah. now, uh, I guess you just can't leave it behind. I wish I knew how to quit you. Once our friends over at Screen Junkies put one of these bad boys together. Speaking of Screen Junkies, I was on two appearances last week with them. Uh, Screen Junkies news episode, talking about directors. I love being a part of that. If you guys can go check that out, we would really appreciate it. Also, they're switching movie fights from weekly to monthly, and I was on like the big sort of uh, royal rumble of movie fights. It was a really fun, fun, great episode. Shouts out to JTE. Some of the biggest laughs I've ever had watching a movie fight. <laughs> um, but yeah, please go check that out. Would love it if you guys could show your support there. I think that's the only thing that allows me to cover their honest trailers, is yeah. recommending to go watch their stuff that I've been on. Y y you know what I'm trying to get out of here. Let's, Every let's morning I come in on you just liking and then unliking and re-liking their videos. Coming which you should do to our videos here. and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. Say button. coming on. Okay. It was the highest rated show of its era. The most talked about pop culture event of the decade. Yeah. And by the end Ooh. of its final seasons, one of the biggest letdowns in TV history? All hail Bran the Broken, protector of the realm. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Season six through eight. <laughs> No. The show, based on George R. R. Martin's doorstop novels, returns. But since they already burnt through those, they're going off in outline. And boy, does it feel that way. We're after one big <laughs> season that still pulled off some major highs. Oh, the last yeah. two shortened ones scrambled to tie everything up real quick. I love that moment. Because the showrunners <laughs> either got bored, burnt out, or bitter that no one liked their slavery idea. Featuring huge revelations <laughs> that Damn. never really pay off. You're the true king, so our new king is just yep. the same Night's Watch. Relationships that took years to develop, turning on a dime. Stay with me. Yep. <laughs> and characters who straight up forgot their best friends, or forgot they have magic shape shifting powers, or forgot who they're at war with. I, I, I kind of forgot about. Neurons. She forgot, forgot the biggest Navy in Westeros existed? Admit it, this old show was an elaborate plot for you to meet Ed Sheeran. I did not hear that interview, <laughs> Danny forgot. <laughs> Winter yeah. has come to King's Landing, the internet is so they moved the that. entire city to the desert. There, our main players will finally collide to see who will sit on the Iron Throne. Will the reign of Queen Cersei continue, or will she just stare out the window? Yup. <laughs> will Daenerys continue her surgical attacks against the ruling class, or will she 420 blaze the world when her nephew will give her the Dino nice. War? Nice. Will Jon Snow do anything? No. My watch is ended. I'm tired of fighting. I never wanted a crown. I don't want it. I never wanted it. I told you I don't want it. I don't want it. Oh, wow. I never have. No, the winner at the end of it all is the character with the best story. And who has a better story? And the Bran and the, the Broken. broken. Uh, Bran? F***ing Bran? <laughs> creepy ass kid? How about like literally anyone else? Oh, it's okay, big voice guy. Remember, it's just a trailer. You gotta hype it up. You gotta sell the show. Sell the show. <sighs> say goodbye <laughs> to the complex heroes you've come to love, and say hello to their one-dimensional lookalikes, like Ferris, but of the dick joke. If I lost my c I'd drink all the time. I don't think a c is a true qualification, as I'm sure you'd agree. You should consider yourself lucky. At least your balls won't freeze off. Because you have no c Littlefinger, lord of that one balcony in Winterfell. Oh, yeah. Or the Arya Stark reunion tour. Lady Stark. You came home. You still have it. Needle. Hello, Hot Pot. I'm Arya. Uh, Lady Stark. Don't call me that. You said we'd meet again. And here we are. You left me to die. <laughs> Best I robbed you. 
While the show's reliably great villains backslide from the Joffrey S. Ramsey Bolton to the mysterious Night King, who after oh, all God. your fan theories, really was just some dude the Keebler Elf stabbed to a tree. To this soggy pickup artist who stole the dragon's plot armor for himself. I have to be honest, this is making me hot. <clears throat> what Tim Burton movie is this dork from? I think a dozen high sparrow lectures over more than the emo Pringles guy. They are weak, vain creatures. We live only by the mother's mercy. But truly, everyone avails in I love it. I love it. Oh, God. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> but screw characters, because Game of Thrones can still deliver some amazing visual spectacles sure. as soon as you remember how to crank the brightness on your TV. There we go. From the claustrophobic terror of the Battle of the Bastards to the ground-level chaos of the Battle of King's Landing to eight guys waiting for help on a frozen pond. We have to burn his body. Oh, now you use the fire sword. Rest assured that in the later seasons, everything will look awesome and no one you really care about is gonna die. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That'll be fine. See, good as new. Why not the Starbucks cup? So yeah. hold your wounds for the show that managed to both limp and sprint <laughs> to the finish line. Yeah. Just hold the door on giving it crap for not ending the way you thought. They can't please everybody. Or for characters teleporting around. Huh. They ought to converge at some point. Or even all the huge strategic Who did partners. they please? <laughs> are the same as yeah. potholes. No, be grateful for a show that's given us the last communal experience in our divided world. Crabbing on the final seasons of Game of Thrones. I don't know. Blah, 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 Together. Blah, blah. Aw, gonna miss you, dumb show. Oh, go on, get out of here. Go on, I don't need you. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna watch the spinoffs. You crazy? Ha! <laughs> Story. <laughs> Hack Sparrow. Uh, a Lannister always looks on the bright side. I think we might live. <laughs> I do. I'm here to help. Surely there's some good news lurking somewhere. You should both be happy as well. Thank you. I feel much better. Mortal stay fine! Uh, yes. Hey, that came in handy. It did, it did indeed. Whoa! Ow! Oh. Yes, my queen. I am loyal to my queen. I am loyal to my queen. I obey my queen's commands. I kill the queen's enemies. The new prince of Dorne, I guess? I don't know. Doesn't f***ing matter. Snoke. <laughs> Snow <laughs> guys. Strickland? What kind of name is Harry Strickland in a fantasy world? Harry Strickland sells propane to propane accessories. He does. All right. Our next comedian. You might have seen him north of the wall. Give it up for Corman Giants Bay. No, it's one of you cowards <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> So your pecker. What kind of god would have a pecker that small? <laughs> you weigh as much as two fleas. Stay back, he's got blue eyes! I've always had blue eyes! <laughs> Shrek, you're a lucky man. Fan service. <laughs> Thought it might still be rolling. Uh, <laughs> crap service. Yes. <gasps> You're just gonna murder me on this murder show? <laughs> oh, that bummed out hard. Love the ocean. Shippers. It's good Game of Thrones knockoff music. Good boy. Who's a good boy? We never forget you, my little pup. Less nudity than ever. Whoa. But still. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh my. That's right. Uh, no one wants to see that. Or that. Uh. And definitely not that. Uh. You've known her since she was 14, you sickos. Trying to impress your impossible to impress dad. I won't apologize for trying to rescue Theo. And where is he? Your best hunters. They obviously had help. I didn't think Lady Sansa killed them all by herself. She managed to stay soft and fat. It's 
spending your life reading about the achievements of better men. Do we have the men? I don't have an army. <laughs> Their army's gone. Our army's gone. Do we have enough men? How many men do we have in the north to fight him? Do we have the men? <laughs> we need every man we can get. We don't have the numbers. We don't have the numbers. We don't have the numbers. I don't have enough men. Don't have the men. We don't have the men. You said you don't have enough men. We need more men. We need more men. Yes, we need more men. We're lucky to have this many men. It's not enough. No, it's not enough. <laughs> every big characters have ever done wrong. I strangled my lover. I shot my own father with a crossbow. <laughs> Betrayed my queen. I pushed a boy out of tower window. Crippled him for life. I strangled my cousin with my own hands. We burned her at the stake. She was good, she was kind, and you killed her! I made a terrible mistake. I made a mistake. A horrible mistake. I underestimated a stranger. You don't know the things I've done. I did unspeakable things. I've done plenty of things that I regret. Oh, goodness. How compared to me, you haven't. And I Kid do. Hairline. I mean, Harrington. Oh, no. Never gonna unsee that. A <laughs> slog of Aww. ice and fire. Ha <laughs> 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 I don't care how many people Danny lights on fire. The hound will always have the sickest burns. You're getting old, could I? He's not. Uh, no. Thank you for He's watching not. this video. But did you know we also make other videos? With just one click, you could be watching <laughs> one of those videos now. Hold the door. Did you know we also Hold make door. other videos? Hold the door. <laughs> it's going to be legend. Uh, Wait for it. Sure and I hope you're not lactose intolerant, because the second half of that word is dairy. Legendary. <laughs> nice, Barney. Wow, that was, I just gotta say, kudos to um, not only the writers of the Honest Trailer, but the editors. They had to shuffle through three seasons. Three seasons, primarily the last Almost one. 20 episodes. But still, that's yeah. like a lot of hours you gotta sort through for the TV yeah. show. Uh, kudos yeah. to them. John Bailey, epic voice guy, oh, another yeah. amazing job again. That, I was like halfway through this going, man, I cannot imagine how daunting of a project this is. This is yeah. like a pain to put together. Yeah, seriously. Like Serious it's, pain. It seems intense enough to do it for a two and a half hour movie, but to do it for upwards of 20 hours of television is yes. impressive. And also, I mean, for me, because it has been a while for some of us since we've seen seasons seven or six, it was like, oh, wow, like this actually put some of the uh, timeline back together for me. I'm not gonna lie, there's some <laughs> characters they showed them like, Who's that again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we've come a long way and we laid it a long time. Oh, man. I, I mean, what more can we say? I don't know. It's I mean, so they many... nailed every repetitive motif. <laughs> not, not only have we spent hours breaking down that final season, I mean, for weeks it seemed like everywhere we went, all people wanted to talk about was the show. Because <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like an event we all lived through and, and we all got low-key traumatized by because we invested and yes. had our hearts... Uh, at least bruised a little bit by the experience, you know? What was the line they had in here about a, a show that managed to, like, slog its way oh, through, but limp also... limp and sprint its <laughs> yeah, way to the finish good, line? Such a good line. So lick your wounds for the show that managed to both limp and sprint to the finish line. <laughs> yeah, completely, 100%. That is a perfect metaphor that for this. That is hilarious. <laughs> because like yeah, you start that season eight out and you're like, wait, 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 wait. Especially season eight, but but yeah, you zoom out and the whole thing starts to feel like okay, yeah, this first half and it's like oh, we got a lot to do, and then in the second half you're like oh god, we're slow down, we're almost done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, that's true. It's like they just couldn't find the right pace that could satisfy anyone for that final season. You know, I I've had this conversation quite a bit. I uh, haven't. I haven't uh, talked to anyone about this show. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Um, about how. I, I find it funny, and this is actually a video I might want to do a topic on one day, how we look at a show, especially coming off the heels of a final season of a show, based off its final season. You know, everyone seemed to be judging Game of Thrones. Not everyone, but the, the really predominant voice, it seemed like, was that we judge it based off of its final season and how disappointing that was for so many people. I know not everyone's disappointed with it. It's like people would judge it off of that. And I find it interesting the way how we'll separate movies within a movie franchise on its own. Mm. Like, take the X-Men franchise. People will be like, X-Men 2 is great. You know, Logan is amazing. Mm -hmm. But no one watches the lowest-reviewed movie in the franchise, Dark Phoenix, 
and goes, oh, the X-Men franchise sucks now. But we can easily distinguish between those movies and a franchise, and we do it for plenty of movie franchises, but yet we don't do that for seasons of television. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Daredevil season one is one of the absolute best seasons of TV I have ever seen. It tells a complete story in that first season. I like the other two seasons, but nowhere near as much as the first. Same thing with Game of Thrones. I'm like, look, I'm on the train. I The last half of season eight, I really wasn't a fan of. Like four, five, and six, I just wasn't a fan of those episodes. But the first three I thought were fine. You know, we're one of the people who were like, yeah, I, I see in hindsight all the issues with the Night King moment, but there's no denying for us that that moment when we all freaked out as that, an ep yeah. those three episodes were worth the yes. emotional experience like yeah, yeah when Arya stabbed the night king and i remember like filming that reaction i adore that that was one still. of those <laughs> moments that just came out of me that i didn't a lot of times you can see like even when we're watching australia like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm gonna laugh right now but i'm not like oh i'm unexpected by that me laughing at that yeah when i flipped out i caught myself in the moment that going moment. like you can see the one i'm like <laughs> like readjusting myself yeah. like whoa what just happened to me <laughs> yeah just burst out yeah. well yeah like like that's so. the the I don't need any more fan service this year after that moment. Like that <laughs> yeah. one moment did it enough for me. Yeah, and there were things in hindsight of like, well, they kind of just canned all that. There was all that build up, the lore, everything they covered here in this honest trailer. Anyway, back to my point. It's sad how this final season, maybe because of how monumental and how much viewership it had, so many people sort of view Game of Thrones through a lot of the lens of the whole show has been greatly affected by its final season. Mm -hmm. But I still think that, you know, I, I love season seven. I know that's when a lot of the problems seem to have presented itself with fan bases, but I still love that season. And I think the first six seasons are some of the greatest television I've ever seen. So I would never say this show is a failure because I'm like, do I agree the final episode? Wow, <laughs> that was a major letdown. But yeah. the the show in and of itself, to me, there's just no denying those first six seasons are, are incredible. And it's like they've had the same t two head writers. Uh, they've been following the George R. R. Martin formula. I think that when they, Benioff and Weiss, when they came on to write this show, I think they were under the impression that the other books would have come out by that point. Oh, totally. Martin has said, like, I think, a couple times that he's pissed at himself for not finishing that. Right. So, he was like, I'll be done long before they've gotten there. They were suddenly in this position, and Game of Thrones isn't like Curb Your Enthusiasm, where they could just be like, hey, we're coming back. It's been five years, but sure, we're back. We're you coming know? up with new bits. Yeah, like yeah. for a show like this, I mean, there was a two-year hiatus, but at least they were still like, you know, sizzle in that state for a long time before the show came out. They were put in this unfortunate position where they're like, I guess we have to wrap up Game of Thrones. Oh. Sorry, we have to finish this story, you know? The only thing I have trouble with the sympathy side on is that by all accounts I've been able to find in reading, it was their choice to end it where they did. HBO was like, we'll give you 13 seasons, you can do whatever you want. Like, we at least want yeah. 10. And then when they came in and said 7, HBO was like, what, 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 what? Yeah. And they said, like, we think we need 70 hours to tell this story in completion. I mean, and that's fair. They left a lot out of the books within those first five seasons. At the same time, they still added things to the show mm. that are not in the book. <laughs> so, yeah. like, they still provided great things for it. When they did have books to work off of, it seemed like they established a nice balance. It's not like The Walking Dead where I think you can, or at least in my experience talking to people, seeing fans online, I feel like it's a little harder to please fans of that source material with that show. Yes. Um, whereas Game of Thrones, it seemed like for, yeah, the first uh, six seasons, I would probably I'd say, say, six. Yeah, I'd say six, yeah. They had a really good blend of, okay, here's stuff that's directly inspired by the book. I know six doesn't have the book stuff, but it still feels kind of like it does. And then, yeah, they have their own new elements and things like that. And uh, well, I imagine that because they've been working off outlines for the last few seasons, so I imagine that the the sixth one was probably the most fleshed out outline. Yeah, if I were exactly. to theorize, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, so that way, they had plenty of material to go off of there. Yeah, and then it, that is an interesting debate to have about the way we judge seasons of show, like installments, because sequels to a film franchise or seasons of shows are all installments of an ongoing story, theoretically. Oh, definitely. I feel like it's it's gonna boil down to a case by case because there are shows that seem like you can watch a season or two and kind of check out of the serialized story and still be fine. Like that's the impression I've always gotten from Dexter is like you can watch the first four seasons and you don't necessarily have to finish it if you don't want to. Yeah, Whereas, most, most seasons of Dexter end in a way like 
the hell are we going to do for the next season? Yeah, <laughs> whereas Game of Thrones seems like it, it always is heading in this direction where it's meant to be a compendium. It's meant yes. to be one long story. That's a fair point. And so I kind of land in the middle because I'm like, yeah, the series of books is a series of books and each book has an ending, but even those books have to clue into another That's book. That's true, because not each season of Game of Thrones necessarily ends the story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a fair point. So it's it's weird. It's like, I don't know what to do now because I agree. I'm like, I think there is some amazing stuff that earned its place in television history that shouldn't be overlooked simply because the landing was so wobbly. But at the same time, I'm like, where does this sit now? Like, what is the revisitation motivation from where people the, now? Yeah, well, how people rank this show. Yeah. Can they completely discount whatever... Um, how do you, different feelings they had. Yeah, how do you uh, average the feelings. highs and yeah. lows? Yeah, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. I guess it's the only thing we haven't really talked about. Yeah. <laughs> so all Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should just sit down after this and have a double feature of this and the Game of Thrones Season 8 pitch meeting and yeah. just call it a night and never, ever discuss this again. Well, I, I gotta say, I think most of what they've pointed out in the Honest Trailer are things we've already, yeah. like, addressed ourselves. Yeah. But in their credits, those motifs, I've never actually noticed. Like, do, yeah, we, do we have, do we have the men? men. Yeah. It was a, such a great thing to point out. Like, that is so true. They point oh, that out yeah. all the time. The amount of jokes Tyrion makes about Varys not having genitals. And, having, and all yeah. his bright side cracks and yeah. stuff like that. The yeah. Jon Snow hairline, I think I won't ever keep noticing that I like his hairline. It's unique. I think it's because I have a hairline. <laughs> mm. You have a pretty cool hairline. Yeah. You get when you get your head buzzed. For all the Game of Thrones, I did my hair like that. Yeah. I think that's always my favorite part of especially these honest trailers that deal with like a lot of source material. This kind of reminds me of a different version of like the Wes Anderson one or the more filmmaker inspired yeah. ones where it's like, oh wow, you're really breaking down. Yeah, the nitty gritty yes. details. And how many things do get recycled over three seasons worth of true? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe to Screen Junkies. You can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Uh, click that notification bell. You can notify when we have a new video up. And uh, we'll catch you guys soon.